Okay, so now I guess nobody can tell that I exploded, but uh, the question still stands. Where the fuck am I? It is prime time for a Nexus review. Hello, this is Nexus Productions, and welcome to a video review of Transformers Power of the Primes, uh, Deluxe Ryan Hacks. Yeah, sorry, I kind of got to split this into a two-parter review, just for the sheer sake that I'm not going to have enough time in order to go over all the, the one figure. So, I'm going to have to basically count this as two figures and move on from there. Here we have uh, Orion Pax from the Power of the Primes line in uh, G1 Optimus Prime's truck mode. Um... Yeah, okay, the power of the Prime sign, basically, you had the smaller robot, who could turn into its own vehicle, who could then combine with the thing that became the body for the larger robot, and then the smaller robot and larger robot body could combine into the final thing. Uh, spoiler alert, <sighs> this figure's been released for freaking months now, so, no real spoilers. But yes, this is indeed his cab mode. It is pretty decent looking from the front, uh, looking from the side, and uh, looking from the back, and those are very technical terms. There is a lot of paint here at the front, especially here and in the, in this section, in, in this like general area, but there's no paint on the wheels, no paint on the smokestacks, which only make this look more obnoxious, because here are the smokestacks. These should have been on the uh, over here. That, that would have made a lot more sense, at least to me. Uh, size comparison, just simply because I'm going to be using this as a body double. Here is Transformers Age of Extinction Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. And a thing that a lot of Optimus Prime figures, at least the ones that turn into this kind of cab, a thing that they do is that a lot of them do try to remain the same size. He's like the tattest bit shorter, vertical-wise, he's actually longer so that kind of makes up for height loss and then uh, as of wider uh, they are about the same length up to these hinges here but yeah basically if I were to do an animation I'd have him transform into the truck and then as soon as possible switch it over to this truck simply because it looks better and that, and that's purely because it's a movie verse figure. They always have super accurate vehicle modes, even at the expense of the robot modes. Speaking of robot modes, I believe we've gone over enough of the vehicle mode. Let's get right onto Ryan Pax's robot mode. And here we have Ryan Pax in his, quite literally, well-rounded robot mode. Yes, for such a blocky truck mode, he does turn into quite the smooth, quite the slick robot mode. And I gotta say, I'm fairly impressed, but also fairly unimpressed, because all the chunk that went from vehicle mode is pretty much here. I mean... That's, this is pretty much everything blocky, and then everything that wasn't was hidden away, either by turning it in on itself, which Hasbro seems to like to do with Transformers nowadays, or, in the case of the arms, hanging it off the back. The only point of which actually feels kind of clever for hiding chunk, and also roundedness, is this panel here. So, I guess take it as you will, but... Yeah, that was not the best transformation. However, he is a very good-looking robot mode. I do gotta say that. He really does look like Orion Pax. Uh, do kind of wish for this mode that at least the hands and the head were the lighter shade of blue that Orion Pax did have in the one episode he appeared in. But hey, 
that's me. I'm sure nobody, absolutely nobody else is going to complain about that. Plus, you can just paint this. In fact, you can just paint over the areas that don't even appear in truck mode. So, yeah, again, lack of paint. He does have some color to him. Uh, this chest here is all translucent plastic, just for quite literally that little bit. So, of course, that's all painted. Uh, the obvious not anyone else chest on the back here. These are painted pieces, again, on translucent. So, a lot more paint does feel like it did go to the vehicle mode, but hey, at least he's got some of the necessities down. And there is some detail brought out with stickers on the shins, which on my copy are actually applied pretty fine. And are very nice looking, I do gotta say. Does indeed invoke some G1 nostalgia if you actually had a G1 toy. The face is actually painted very nicely. This head is very reminiscent of that original cartoon episode. And I do gotta say, I'm very impressed by that. I mean, damn, that is beautiful. Just wish he wasn't such a, in a bland expression. He doesn't feel like the kind of character who would be so bland. Now, something I do very much like about here, and that is starting to appear on more figures, is you notice the hip armor here. This hip armor is a separate part from the actual leg joint. So... Basically, uh, he has that look of the Gundam crotch, essentially with the diaper, but yet he doesn't sacrifice any articulation. Gundam, start doing this! Oh my god! I cannot tell you how good it feels to do this. Now, uh, accessories, you can split apart Optimus Prime's gun into two weapons. Considering this is a Ryan Pax, he's more of a pacifist. I'm not gonna do that, but hey, just know that it's 5mm ports, you can give him whatever weapon you want, or you can give him the Optimus Prime gun, just saying. As of articulation, the head here is on a ball joint, can look up and down a little, and does have a little bit of wiggle. If you untab the head, you can make him look a lot more down, though at the sacrifice of this. The arms are on ball joints, they can go... uh they can't go 360, but if you finagle a little bit, it can go around uh, the bicep swivels. Double bend at the elbow, thanks to transformation. The wrists move down, and if you saw my Cogman review, I do include that as a point of articulation if you do give the figure a sword. As said before, the hips do have a lot of range, thanks to that hip skirt. can move up that far and back that far, and that's all we really need. Uh, arms do move out like that. Uh, hips only move out like that because there's a tab, so hey, that's fine. Thigh swivel, knee bend on a soft ratchet, and then that moves a bit. <coughs> Sorry for the random cut. Uh, I almost died from coughing. Yay. And yeah, that's all the articulation, so he is pretty well decently articulated. If we bring in our Evasion Mode Optimus, you can see that despite having very similar sized vehicle modes, Optimus did, the Evasion Optimus did indeed get very taller. So I guess you could say that he did perform some mass shifting, and I do gotta say that is fairly impressive on this figure's part. Not so impressive here, but hey, he does also become very round. Although he does become very spiky. I don't know. I think there's enough reviews of this Optimus Prime, but if I do end up getting the upscale uh, Wei Jiang inspired leader class from Takara, then I'll probably review it and talk about how all this stuff is revealed and that kind of stuff. So yeah, basically... That's it for Orion Pax. I do think that even for $60, this is a really fun figure to get. He's very articulate. He's, well, he looks very good. And uh, if you're looking for Cybertronian mode transformers, then, well, look no further. Uh, Generations Orion Pax was released 
couple years ago, and uh, that figure was fairly good, though it was, um, it wasn't exactly like this guy, and basically people have asked, have asked for this guy for a fairly long time, so that's basically Hasbro actually giving us what they want, which is what they've been doing with the recent Generations line, especially with this Power of the Prince figure, and I cannot wait until part two of this review. So anyways, this has been Nexus 8846 Productions, signing off once again, saying, uh, don't kill yourself, D subscribe, uh, maybe don't spend all your money on plastic.